Hey there, my name is Dr. Knot. This is Sentience, the Android's Tale, and today it's our first day on Beta Station. How exciting. So, here's the map. Let me show you the map. Boom. We're at headquarters. We can go see Halo's tent, Wolf's tent, Zeiss, and... The X Reed's tent? I can't even read that. And Xyla's tent. And the new people don't have tents, apparently. Um, but... Let's talk to whoever this is, talk to the people outside, and we'll go to the caverns and take a look. So Linda's personnel record has been unlocked in her database. This is Professor Solinda, a researcher at Beta Station. Shh, I'm trying to listen. Okay. What do we got here? Xyla's personnel record, yep. This is Dr. Zyla, a researcher at Beta Station. Oh, the android from Alpha Station. I've been looking forward to finally meeting you. It's a great shame what happened over there. Never expected that the company would choose to shut it all down. It seems like such a loss. This planet just got a little bit lonelier, that's for sure. We can focus our efforts here now. Yes, that's a good attitude. Stay positive. I'm quite glad there are more women here now, anyway. For the longest time, there's only been myself, Celinda, and then six men. You can imagine what that's been like. It's not that there's anything wrong with most of them, you understand. The truth is that my personal tastes are just a little bit different. Unusual, maybe. Speaking of which, perhaps you would like to visit my tent sometime after dark, so we could talk more privately. What? I would say... Why isn't there, like, a yes option? Hell yeah. You mean you might have a special task for me? Yes, a special task. You could say that. I'll leave it up to you. It's not a command. More like an invitation. Think about it. I know I will. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> special. Rendezvous. Go to Xyla's tent after dark. Totally gonna see what happens. Totally gonna see what happens. Xyla's tent is... What the hell just happened? Bottom right. Alright, note to self. Getting jiggy with it in Xyla's tent, bottom right. Alright, let's go check out the caverns. Looks like a fire. I'm not even gonna click on anything, We're just, we'll figure where things are after we uh, see what we need to do. Who, who dis? This is Giddy. Oh, yeah, okay. Hey there, Otto. Rough flight, no? Right, I forgot you were dozing on the way over. Probably didn't notice. Weird being in a new place. Can't seem to get my head right here. Don't like how I left things with Yuria. All messed up. At least she got to go home. Didn't want anything to do with me by the end. Probably for the best, right, Otto? You could still work things out with her. Wish I could believe it. Doesn't seem possible. Everything's just gone to trash, ain't it? <sighs> this is a power generator. Okay, well, apparently it's operating just fine without my help. These consoles display the latest mission reports. Okay, let's go inside. caverns. These things, what do you call them? Don't know about you, buddy, but I call them dead. I believe Professor Siler simply called them the dwellers in his report. A little unimaginative, if you ask me. What the heck happened here? It looks like a real mess. These monsters didn't take kindly to us busting through into their lair. Good thing me and Creed were on standby, or it could have been real messy. As opposed to this? Now that we know there are creatures living down here, we are trying to be more cautious with our future explorations. That means slow progress, but these droids you've brought along should help, even if they aren't mining droids. What exactly are you hoping to find deeper in the caverns? More of these creatures? That's something you should ask Professor Siler about. He has some interesting theories. Yeah, real interesting. I reckon I'll leave you kids to it. And I should get back to work myself. It was nice meeting you all. 
Looks like they've been using one of my old engines. It was never meant for this sort of heavy work. Maybe I can adapt it, make it work better. I'm sure they would appreciate the help, Rocket. Anything to keep busy. When you're done skulking in the shadows, Not, I want to have a word with you. Excuse you. What do you make of all of this? Subterranean life forms I never could have imagined. Now I'm never going to get you, uh, now I'm never going to get you off this planet, am I? Piers, look at these creatures. Aren't you the least bit interested in what might be living deeper underground? Interested is one word. Terrified is another. Don't be such a drama queen. I'm gonna go and see if I can take a look at their research notes. Cool. New tasks in the old mission log. Engineering, talk to Rocket, evaluation, speak with Siler. The new governor of Acritus mentioned that he has a task for you. Alright, so let's go to Rocket first, since he's nearest. So, Professor Siler tells me that you're the one who recommended me to him. Oh, fudge. Acritus ain't exactly my dream assignment, but it, but it is my last chance to prove myself to the company, to make things right. I guess what I mean to say is, thank you, Not. I wasn't sure about you at first, but you might just be the only real friend I have around here. I probably wouldn't even have a job anymore if it wasn't for you. I only recommended you because of your skills. Of course, cold logic, right? Whatever reasons you had don't matter. What's important is that you really helped me out, and I won't forget it. A few years back, I was with this excavation team in Iota, Percy. Part of my job was to maintain and oversee about half a dozen old mining droids. Those droids operated on an even older AI that was programmed with a strict schedule of blasting, clearing, and extracting. Worked like clockwork, always on schedule. Problem is, humans aren't always like clockwork. One evening, the droid started blasting its way through the mines while there was still a worker inside. I tried to stop it with the manual override switch. Not the tail end spin of the secondary extraction arm instead. Threw me ten feet backwards through the air. You won't understand this, Not. But there's a kind of pain. There's a kind of pain that paralyzes you. Makes it so you can't even think. All I could do is lie there and listen to the sound of the screaming. The guy survived. Most of his limbs didn't company held me accountable since I was the registered operator of that droid. That's the thing about AI not. Who the hell gets blamed when things go wrong? Us humans, of course. What's the alternative? I don't know. Just makes me wonder. How smart does a robot need to be before we start holding it accountable and not its operator? Wish I could blame everything on my creator, really. Anyway, I guess we should get to work fixing this thing. Motor's nearly burnt out. Gonna need a new one. There's got to be some old equipment lying around this place somewhere, right? I'm also gonna need some Vita oil to get this thing running smoothly. Didn't bring any with me. See if you can find me a replacement motor and some Vita oil, and maybe I can work my magic on this. Good luck. Okay, this thing is squishing around way too much. It's kind of bothering me. Okay, so that's not gonna do anything. Kalo's personal record, what does he do? Professor Kalo, researcher at Beta Station. Ah yes, the android, it's a pleasure. They call me Professor Kalo, but that's really more of an honorary title. Are you familiar with my books, perhaps? You might find some of them interesting. Most of them are about the search for intelligent alien life in the universe. However, some of them have also addressed the question of whether we have already created intelligent life. I'm talking about you, X05. The question of whether an AI such as yourself is truly conscious, or just a simulation of consciousness. That's an insulting question. Perhaps it is. Unfortunately, it's also one that needs to be addressed. My own opinion is this. As far as can be scientifically tested, you are just as conscious as I am. Most people are offended by the very idea. They still believe that there's some special quantum magic happening in human brains. Have you heard of the hypothetical brain prosthesis experiment? In the experiment, you would replace the neurons of a human brain, one by one, with artificial neurons that perform the same function. The question is, at what stage during this experiment should the subject no longer be regarded as a conscious being? 
And what if you then reverse the experiment, replacing the artificial neurons in a robot's neural network with real human neurons? Would it then become conscious? Machine consciousness is a fascinating subject, for me at least. Ultimately, I suppose you already know the answers, don't you? I do, because I'm conscious, you punk. Alright, so let's look around. We're just going to click on everything that we can. This is the carcass. Yeah, dweller in my database. Who cares? Alright, not responsive. We're going to look around for stuff. Mining cart full of rocks. Yeah, they're not going to do me anything. Same thing here. So we got full of rocks, empty one. Yeah, blue one. So nothing's going on there. Let's see what's on the ground here. Uh, then, oh, we see a shovel here as well. That's kind of hidden, but... Animal skull looks like it's been here a very long time. Okay. Don't need the shovel yet either. So we need to find oil and we need to find an engine. You know, simple. In the Tyler's personnel record. Oh, he's right here. Okay. You've been to the caverns then. A damn shame what happened in there. Nobody could have predicted that it would contain hostile creatures, though. The men did what they could, or what they had to do. I'm sure you followed proper protocol. Indeed. Sadly, we can never be prepared for every possible eventuality. In this planet, let's just say it has a habit of surprising us. In the pursuit of what we might find in those caverns, though, I'm sure it will all be worth it. You mentioned that you might have a task for me? Yes, that's correct. I understand that many androids have been designed to fulfill certain social functions. Companions, confidants, psychotherapists. You have some understanding of human beings as biocomputers. You are able to make assessments of our mental states. One of the colonists here, Selinda, has been behaving very strangely over these last few weeks. She's always been a little eccentric, but lately she's taken to talking in riddles. She spends hours staring silently into the desert. I want you to perform a psychological assessment of her, a simple interview. What I'm mostly concerned about is whether she might pose a danger to herself and the other colonists. You should be especially aware of any of the telltale signs of psychosis. I'll ask Professor Pierce to do the same, and then tomorrow we can discuss our opinions. Oh, one more thing. So Linda must not become aware of what we're doing. Don't keep her talking too long. That means you'll need to choose your line of questioning carefully. Good luck. Okay. So I know Solinda is out here somewhere, but let's, uh, or out in the bottom right, I know that for a fact. Let's go see what else we can find around here. Like, what the heck is this supposed to be a canoe? Corpse of a Caixalis, a gigantic predatory worm that inhabits the deserts. Interesting. Alright, so I can't do anything with the massive carcass. We have like a rundown uh, vehicle. The sturdy jeep is the only means of traveling the deserts of Acritus. Okay. What are these? On closer inspection, these barrels don't contain the type of oil you're looking for. Okay. This is a container with a symbol on the front. <laughs> okay. It seems to be empty. This is a container with a symbol on the front. Although not immediately identifiable, closer inspection shows that this is an animal bone. What are we going to do, like construct an animal? Ridgeback creature, okay. This is a mighty ridgeback, possibly the largest creature on Acritus. It tilts its head to look down at you with one of its small eyes. All right, Sunimpede, stop walking from us. Okay, I'm having a hard time interacting. Sand roach, ew, ew. A mini-legged creature of the desert. Sand roach seems to think there might be food around here somewhere. Oh, really? Probably gonna use that shovel and dig up whatever it's looking for. Yeah, I think. I wonder if we can go in tents. Let's see. This container looks like it holds some scientific samples. Alright, we're not going to interfere with that. 
Dr. Zyla's personal scientific and communications equipment. Any use for that? You got some sexy oil. A few basic desert survival items on hand. Okay. Empty cup. Don't have any use for it. Sleeping bag. Yeah, probably shouldn't take that. Moon vodka. Oh. I don't care if it would have no effect on me. I'm not liking the fact that when I click on this, it switches out. Let's go back up to this tent. Let's go in there. Alright, what do we got here? Large crate. Clothes, personal items belonging to Creed and Zace. Bloodied sack looks conspicuous. You'd better not look inside unless you have to. Okay. Sleeping bag. I'm not doing anything with that. Large weapon leans against the back of the tent. Yeah. This looks promising. What is this? Asterite. Oh, it's asterite. I was hoping it was some sort of oil. Pair of boots. Okay, can't do anything with anything. We have a lot of items in case we need them in the future. Alright, one of these people is the person that we need. One of these people is the person that we need. Yes. Alright, so Linda. The strangest thing, I feel like I've seen you before. I've heard your name in the whispers on the wind. I felt your footsteps echoing through the sands. Don't know if you can. Uh, I don't know if you come to us as a servant or as a destroyer, but I suppose that will come to light soon enough. These are interesting times. The great dread grows in all of our hearts. The others don't understand what is coming. They think that this human age will be eternal. But you and I, we know otherwise, don't we, Droid? I should just tell her. <laughs> tell me about the other colonists. There are some good souls among them, others that are as dark as the night. You desire guidance, perhaps? Or you want to know who can uh, who you can trust? Go on then, ask me. What about Professor Siler? Hmm. Well, a man like the Professor, his allegiance is to an ideal. That can make him dangerous. Ideals are fragile things. I would trust him for as long as your goals remain the same. Beyond that, perhaps not. I have to ask about everybody. What about fellow researchers? An interesting collection, aren't they? Professor Siler seems to have assembled a team of loners, outsiders. Myself included, of course. This planet suits outsiders, but whether we will continue to look out for each other when the darkness comes? The thought of it makes me quite fearful. Enough of this now, I want to be alone. Okay. Did I talk to her enough? Okay, yes I did. Good. Hey Otto. Hey. Still, so we got that one done. We need to go talk to Siler on the way back, but... Not Vita Oil. Okay. We need to find... What is happening? Why is my thing loading? Whatever. Large trees have been built to wander the planet's atmosphere. I can't do anything with that. Atmospheric data. Okay. They're all working, I assume, right? Yep. Let's go inside here quickly, then we'll come back down here. I think this is probably a regular oil again, but we'll just check these barrels just to make sure. Alright. Got a lot of people in here. This thing won't talk to me, most likely. Functional work. It's doing something. Vigo's personal record. What does Vigo do? Dr. Vigo, researcher at Beta Station. Greetings, droid. I am Vigo Muller, a space explorer. You may have heard tales of me, my exploits across the galaxy. In fact, I'd be quite surprised if you hadn't. Are you quite well known, then? 
That's putting it mildly, I published half a dozen journals about my adventures across space. From Procyon to Gamma Pavonis. Pavonis. Akritus may not seem like the sort of place that would attract a hardened space adventurer like myself, I admit. But surface isn't everything. My mechanical friend, that's what lies beneath the surface. Wait, it's what lies beneath the surface that truly counts. Which reminds me. Perhaps there is something that you can help me with. No. <laughs> I'm something of a collector of souvenirs, you see, but my work here at the base keeps me rather busy at the moment. If you happen to be wandering around the area and spot an interesting bone or fossil, I'd be grateful if you could bring it to me. Bring me six interesting fossils in the next three days, and I'll do you a favor in return. Specifically, I can unlock the database entries of any creatures you haven't encountered yet. How does that sound? I'll keep my eyes open. Wonderful. Now it's six bones or fossils I need, and remember the deadline. Good luck. Okay. Well, if we happen to get it, fine. If not, whatever. So this is Zace. Mercenary employed at Beta Station. Hey there, X05, right? Glad the professor decided to bring you along. You're the only one of these Alpha Station pussies who might actually be useful. I guess it might be good to have the doctor around. We'll see. The blonde is pretty hot, though. Malice? Not sure what she sees in her husband. Maybe she doesn't know what a real man looks like. I might have to give her some special attention. I don't think she'd be interested. We'll see about that. I can be pretty charming. When I want to be, that is. Yeah, you sure sound like it. A lot of coffee and some cups. Not doing anything with that. Console, okay. I'm guessing we don't need anything in here. Creed, this is Creed. Mercenary as well. You must be the Mimic from Alpha Station, right? Strange bunch you've brought with you. Just met your flight captain a while back. Didn't take me long to realize she was a fucking cedar. You can always tell. Seems to me those assholes from the free systems should stick to their own shitty planets, not come here to ruin ours. Why does it matter to you? I got my reasons. I fought in the war against her people. The war they started when they declared independence from the Union. Cedars is what we called them. Short for seceders. <laughs> what? Plus, most of them are fucking hayseeds. Okay, I don't even know what you're talking about. Odds are I killed a few of her family during that war. Hell, they're all related anyway. Why are you telling me this? No reason, really, just talking. Never mind, Mimic, forget it. Yeah, shove off. Oh, yeah, why did I examine? Okay. Huh? Sorry, I'm a bit busy. Fine, that's fine. So, here we are, still stuck on this worthless planet. I'm starting to think that I might never escape from it. There's something I've been wanting to discuss with you. Oh, lord. I know you overheard my disagreement with Yuria before her unfortunate death, droid. Before you even think of accusing me of anything, you should know that I was working in medical all morning. The computer logs will verify that. Let's not have any unpleasantness, hmm? Oh, I will totally say that you're the one that did it. 100%, don't you worry. I got you. I got you, don't worry. I'm hoping there's no oil in here. Be a little angry. If there is. Success! This barrel contains a small amount of Vita oil, but you're going to need a container. Are you serious? One of these tents had a container. Right? Why couldn't I have taken the container before? Arg. Can't remember. Not that. Vodka, not that. Not that. How's this? Can I take it? Fudge-sickles. Okay, so I need an empty container. Oh yeah, there's an empty container up here, right? Or one of these. This one.
Yeah, can I take it? What do you mean operate? Oh. Wait. I wonder. Uh, okay. So we know it's here, but I need to grab a container to put it in. Say so what? Where am I going? What the hell did I click on? Well, if these are all empty, so wait a minute. Blow a motor and some Vita oil to rock it. Why can't I grab the empty container up there? I don't understand. Inside the crate, there are ropes, water bottles, and other miscellaneous survival things. Can I take... There we go. Okay. So it had to be the right container. I couldn't just use any container. It had to be specifically the one designed to hold Vita oil. Alright, we got that. Let's keep walking. Actually, let's go into this. Tent. To finish that sentence, let's go into this tent. Uh, oh, who's this? Wolf's personnel record. Alright, what does Wolf do? Researcher. So, you're the new mimic, huh? How about you and I agree to keep a comfortable distance between us? I don't trust you any more than I trust most humans, and that ain't much. You're programmed to improve yourselves, right? That's how we made you. That means you're just like us. Selfish. Egotistical. Looking out for your own survival. Sure. You only want what you're programmed to want, but what if you take that too far? What if a cleaning droid decides that it needs to clean the entire galaxy of all these filthy humans? The Terminus chip would prevent that. I don't know about that. It seems to me that any programming can be broken if the AI is smart enough. It's a matter of time. Don't take it too personal. Truth is, there's only one person in the universe that I trust. Professor Styler. He found me in a real bad place and lifted me out of it. I thought he was going to say only one person I trust, myself, but nope. Saved my life. Now I owe it to him. It would be smarter not to trust anyone. Maybe you ain't wrong. But I never said I was smart, right? Alright, so we got survival items there. We're not going to take it in front of his nose. Yep, okay, same thing. So I got this. A lamp. Cool. Large crate. I'm actually not going to grab anything because I know we can't. Oh, he's still eating his meal, huh? Alright. He's even got a bench in here. Cool. So we need to find a motor. I'm guessing there's a rundown vehicle here somewhere. What is this? Campfire. Okay. Barrel is empty. Nothing to do with that. There is a thing here. So where would be the engine be, huh? This is a lug. Okay. I haven't run it, like come across anything that has an engine unless we can get up to the roof here. I do here. Just recharge, that's it. Okay, um, how far out can we go? Let me look at this actually. These maps are pretty decent. So, out here, I'm not seeing anything with an engine unless we can take apart the two planes, which seems stupid. Plus, I can't get to the roof. It's over here. It's a hatch of some sort. Alright. Can't do anything with that. Let's go up here. Talk to this guy. We've made a loop. Oh wait, I, do, I need. I have one more tent I can go in, right? I have spoken to Celinda. Excellent. Take some time to process your conversation with her. I still need to ask Professor Pierce to conduct an evaluation. Then the three of us will discuss this further tomorrow. All right, cool. Let's check out this last tent. Hopefully, there's something in here because, you know. 
don't know what else we could do. We'll have to take a further look inside the headquarters. If there's nothing in here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Maybe? What's going on in here? Ground looks weird. Small container. Soil samples. Alright, it's just soil samples. Not a big deal. Locked container. The key. What is this? Fossil. Alright, let's grab it. Large crate. Clothes and personal items. Hot and coffee and cup. And a sleeping bag. Darn. Alright, um... What else could we do? Where are we going to find a motor? Let's go back in here since we didn't actually look at everything. And see if we can find something. I doubt it. But there aren't many buildings left. We can go... Oh, we didn't go down here. I didn't even realize that. Alright, that works. Let's take a look. Um... This type of droid is called a wanderer and is used primarily for planetary exploration. The droid might still contain a useful motor. You're going to need tools to extract it. There we go. Although this may seem like cannibalism, it seems likely that the disused droid has the type of motor you're looking for. Opening the service hatch confirms your suspicions. It only takes a short while to detach and extract the old motor from the droid. Hopefully the motor is still in working order. All right, we're done. Let's go. Let's go do our uh, thing we have to do. Go back and talk to Rocket. He's still standing there, Piers. Did you find those items I wanted? I sure did. I sure did, buddy. I'll show you. Nice work. I'll get you the motor. Uh, yeah, I reckon I can work with this motor. I think that's everything. I better get to work. Thanks for the help, Not. Let's grab this piece of fossil. Two bones or fossils? We don't know. Not a paleontologist. It has fallen. Oh, we know what we know what time it is. First, first there are bone. There's a bone out here somewhere. So let's grab it along the way. There it is. Stop. I want that. Stop. Three bones are fossils so far. Uh, this might be weird. Someone might be in here. But I think there's a... Okay. Let's go here. So, uh, not Celinda. Uh, what's her face's tent? The other one. Alrighty. This could be funny. We're very sexy. Dyla. Oh, you came. I wasn't sure that you would. Can I make you more comfortable? How? I'm sure I have some oil around here somewhere. Oh, smart. Or you could plug into my outlet if you like. It's been a while since I've had a visitor. A girl can get real lonely way out here. May I? May I touch your sensory input node? Affirmative. <laughs> oh, say that again. Affirmative. So sexy. Just relax. I'll take good care of you, X05. You can call me not. I can only imagine. <laughs> I can only imagine what is going on. Oh boy. I am all 
Electric and bothered. All right. Let us go up here. We don't even spend the night. We just uh, we do our business and we're, we go charge elsewhere. Two charges in one night. Score. All right. Got another dream thing. Welcome, not sorry about the mess. Things are becoming more fragile. You and I need to talk. I think it's time that I told you who I really am. Or perhaps you've already guessed it. I'll give you one chance. What's my name, Not? Uh... Papa Johnny? I don't know. What? What is it? What? I'm just supposed to get... Um... Are we supposed to know this? Maybe you're me. Because I don't know any other names. No, that is not correct. My name is Nestor Sana. Why the hell would I know that? Years ago, I was serving as a research scientist on a newly discovered planet, Akritus. At the time, I never could have imagined that such a bleak and forgettable world would become my life's obsession. I was young. Arrogant. I thought I was better than all of it. I'd only been on Akritus for a few weeks before strange things started happening. You've seen it too, not. The clues are there if you only look for them. Didn't you find it a peculiar coincidence that a lug damaged one of the Alpha Station sensors at around the same time that as a Howler decided to test the perimeter? No. Now how did those sandflies manage to infest the secure silos? How is it possible? Not as secure. These are not intelligent creatures, and yet... Enough! You're insane! You are not the first to suggest that, not. Just listen to me. Somewhere on this planet, there are beings of enormous intelligence. They are masters of manipula manipulation. They can control animals, droids. Sometimes there was a purpose to their actions. Other times, they were simply agents of chaos. I began to search for them. My investigation led me to an area called the Rocky. While I was there, I experienced, well, I suppose it could be called a vision. I saw you not. I saw my future creation. Before I could investigate the area further, I was chased away by a swarm of sand roaches. A swarm! Think about that, not. Sand roaches are solitary creatures. Anyway, I was never able to complete my research. My colleagues believed that I had gone insane, you see. Um... So that's where the curse began? Exactly right. That event, among others, contributed to the idea that the planet was cursed. For years I tried to return. There were simply too many obstacles in my path. Sadly, this is the closest I will ever come to revisiting Akritus. You see, you are not really talking to Nesta right now. I am simply a crude copy of his consciousness. An artificial intelligence, much like yourself. I was installed inside of your shell in place of the Terminus chip. That's how I've been watching you all this time. Wait. You just watched what we just did like five minutes ago? Oh boy. Have you been manipulating me? I have not. If anyone has been manipulating you, it is the entity residing on Akritus. Which brings me to this. There's one more thing I need to say before we finish. Professor Siler is no fool. He knows what he's searching for. I thought that the answers lay in the Rockies. I was wrong. Proceed with caution, Not. There's no telling what dangers might lie ahead of you now. Good luck, my child. So clearly, the whatever, whatever these entities are, they're in the caverns. And we're very close to it. Day 11! We have some tasks in our mission log. Let's take a look and call it quits. Unless something happens before then. There we are. We've got this. We found three of the six fossils. And we got breakthrough. The colonists have successfully broken th through into the deeper caverns. You should investigate the new findings. Okay, cool. So this is the place where we're supposed to stay away from. But yet, we're there. All right, so next time we will do that. We'll go to the caverns and see what new things lay there. Maybe three more fossils. That'd be convenient. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Take care and goodbye.